Here we are again for our fourth and final instalment of this Shipping TV special series, filmed aboard JJ Pryor's sand barge Mark Pryor on her daily round trip from Fingering Ho in Essex to Deptford Creek on the London River. We've got plenty of landmarks here. The Woolwich Ferry, two vessels in operation as London's people are making their way home from work. Then there's Tate and Lyle's Thames Refinery, it's the largest sugar refinery in the EU and one of the largest in the world with an annual capacity of around 1.2 million tonnes of the sweet stuff. Recognise her? This is the Royal Iris lying here since 2002. She was built in 1950 and was once host to the Beatles, Jerry and the Pacemakers and many others. When she served on the River Mersey, the Thames Barrier needs a call on the radio to get instructions for which entrance to use. Individual gates can be raised or lowered at any time for maintenance. The whole set of gates closed 40 times in 2014, but the Environment Agency says it should continue to carry on working until the 2070s, when a replacement scheme will probably be needed. After 15 years of life, the old Millennium Dome looks as if it's becoming a bit stained and scruffy. But its new neighbour, the Emirates Airline cable car route over the river, looks very smart and we all want to ride. It's surprisingly reasonable for a tourist attraction, so can I have a go please? Ahead of us there, just by the start, we've got Greenwich Power Station. Obviously the chimneys now, are, the four chimneys are a lot shorter than they used to be. They used to be about three times higher than that. And on that, uh, on the wharf outside the power station, sometimes you used to see three colliers, big colliers. Uh, Stevenson Clark colliers laid there, three abreast, waiting to unload their coal to fuel the power station. Just to the left of there, you've got a little pub there called the Cutty Sark. There used to be a scrapyard right next to it, Robinson's Wharf. And uh, what was that, in the 70s, I used to go on there a lot and load scrap. A little bit further, you had um, Lovell's Wharf, also a busy little wharf, which is now where those houses are. Then Piper's Wharf, well known for ship refurbishment. Now we pass Greenwich and the Cutty Sark before we get to the purpose of our journey. Deptford Creek and Brewer's Wharf. No beer this time, just hundreds of tons of sand and stone. Another BTS. Our prior, we're in the bound top end of Greenwich Reach. Shortly round at 4 and 2 to enter Deptford Creek. Okay, round the BTS. Greenwich Reach is shortly entering Deptford Creek. Silvertown is uh, 4 metres up. 4 metres silver down, yeah. With the tide flooding strongly, the skipper turns Mark Pryor into the flow to head for the creek entrance. The foremast, aftermast and radar mast go down, so she'll fit under both the entrance bridge and the creek road bridge without them being raised. Once in the creek mouth, the tidal influence and the wind are lessened. The creek has got a 90 degree turn by the creek road bridge and the skipper pushes the bow into a mud bank by the wall. He'll take her stern to the berth which is just through the bridge. But this stop gives the crew the chance to strip off the hatchboards and they can keep a close eye on the tide rising through the bridge hole. 
it's no good going through too early as you'll see We've been here for about an hour before it's time to move again. Going astern through a narrow gap is tricky in a single screw ship and it's made more difficult by the bridge's arch. Letting the wheelhouse get too close to the sides could do a lot of damage. The rudder has very little, if any, effect when going astern, so lining up the ship is done by giving short but powerful bursts of ahead, using the rudder to direct the water flow from the propeller. In effect, this moves the ship's stern from side to side, and when it's lined up where you want it to be, you go astern. You can still use bursts of ahead to move the stern and realign the ship while moving astern. Experience, local knowledge and years of practice count for a lot here too. The creek's bottom has a V-shaped profile, with the mud stacked up alongside the quay. So as Mark Pryor noses in, Jeff the crane driver, who's been doing the job for about 40 years, digs into the forward hold to start grabbing stone. Eight or a dozen full grabs lifts the bow enough for the ship to touch the key, where Fraggle makes the spring fast, but leaves the head rope loose. Now the crane starts work on the aft hold, so Mark gradually slides in and comes alongside. The whole discharge takes around an hour and a half, with the grab making a very tidy clearance of the holds. As darkness falls, the crew get the hatch boards off the side deck. Then it's time for a few minutes blow waiting for the tide to rise. Mark Pryor will leave at local high water and the bridge operator will open both bridges to let her go straight through. And here we go. This shot is speeded up five times, but it gives you the idea. Also, please ignore the flashing red. It's the tally light on the camera.
considering that it is just the 14th of April now, and it's, what, about 5 o'clock in the morning, it's actually not too damn cold. It hasn't been really icy all night, I think. I've had a few hours kip, or a few hours doze, and uh, in that time we've got all the way from the mighty Thames up to the not-so-mighty River Cone, and we're heading in now, passing Brightling Sea, heading up towards Fingering Ho, which is our home port and where I leave this fine ship. We've had an excellent trip. Lots of cups of tea, which is essential when you're at sea, and uh, quite a bit of grub as well, which goes down quite well. It's coming up towards half flood as we sail gently up the cone. You may notice that the ship's head is a bit high. There's a problem with the setting on the four-peat ballast tank flooding valve. That'll get fixed before they sail again. for your job all the time. That's right, yeah. Just keep telling them it's rough. It's rough. It's too rough. <laughs> See, sick all trip. So would you like every trip to be like this, Frags? I would love it to be like this. Calm, beautiful. Calm, beautiful, but not foggy. <laughs> you're very right. And you, you're another one like the skipper. You can sleep through anything aboard the ship, can't you? Sometimes. So, thanks to the skipper, that's Pete, and the mate, Frags, JJ Pryor, and the Port of London Authority, and above all to Mark Pryor, the star of our show. Nice trip. <laughs>